Friday. And um, if anybody started trading um, for the first time in their life after graduating from some trading course and um, they think because they took a class and candlesticks or something that they have this uh, edge that they're going to pile into. I'm just saying I don't think that's a good idea. Because um, typically, uh, you know, if people are making, they claim, 10% a month or whatever a year, they're killing it. Yes, because they're churning like a just a pile of goobers in a um and by the way how's how's your um no offense to the uh, um prop traders i guess you gotta trade that from home forgot my idea uh, i really feel bad about anybody that invested in my um uh what's it called the hot babe um just bikini clad girls that are executing trades right um, hot babe prop firm. Well, they're actually propped up. You prop them up. You hold them while they trade. Okay. That was a bad idea. So the uh, Euro's taking a run and um, very anxious morning. We've been through a lot of price. We're kind of dead in the water at a buck ten. Pretty amazing. We're 25 pips above that right now. So in a standard lot, had you bought on these dojis, if you just said, I'm going to only pull the trigger when I see a doji, which is a small body. And these are non-directional dojis. I'm using my line chart on top to give me an indication of the one period moving average, which is as tight as it gets. That is the skeleton of the market. That's the true market time. And if you go to the monthly, it's like it never happened. But something happened. And this is why the theory or the concept or the view of uh, prices that um, are extreme... Um, but they're instantly extreme from the standpoint of uh, it's very quiet, and then kablam, the market rips up and down. Um, so how can you make money from prices changing the way they did here? And it's not a it's not a bad tick on this chart. There's not a bad tick on this chart. Granted, the risk windows are different from the seller standpoint and the buyer standpoint on this chart. If you can see the um, cause for the effect, so why such a big black bar? And big black bars matter because anybody that has any um, trade plan or or a directional system running right now. If they didn't take profits, they got stopped out. Can we all admit that? So goobers that step in the market with harebrained trade plans like, and we can all see the folly of this in this moment, because people have made millions and lost millions if they were exposed to this event. So you're fragile if you're in. So the fragile guy, I don't know if he ever made money. That doesn't matter because it's not about money. It's about risk of being alive. You could fucking die. Isn't anybody just fucking waking up to that? Right? I mean, why are people so scared? What the fuck happened to people? What happened to them? And why? So... Yeah, you'd have to trade with a stop. Or, if you're trading so teeny-weeny, this is only a $1,000 move in a standard lot, right? 
these big black lines are 100 pips so that's um 10 bucks all right is that is that now the guy that was um complaining about i'm trading too tiny really so um if you're trading really bigly into this that's the monthly euro dollar now you could have been a brainiac or a um auctioneer uh theorist and say well okay anytime it comes down there i'm gonna buy and i don't know if they stopped you out but if you bought this spike now this is where you have to play back what you're looking at now by the way these are the scripts that have limited exposure so this is very um well, the fragility is switching because if I drop this script and I say down here, I'm giving you eight hours, bitch, to make it down here. Now, this is a, um, a contest. This is an auction I'm setting up in the market. I'm like, come on, get me, bitch. Now, on the monthly, you're going to tell me and I'm going to agree with you. Can we make it down there? 100 pips? No it looks like here they're going to hit it like if you strewn if you were to um, lay out and expose yourself to say a range of 40 pips to the south side all i have to do is take this limit drop that is comprised of 5k spread over 40 pimps which cost you 40 bucks to make 20 bucks because my ratio sucks i have an 80 pip stop i could trade this market with this script now i don't think i put an eight hour expiration on that if and that's another thing if this is going to be a weekly i could change the code on that to be weekly so right now it's h8 which is eight hours if I drop it up here, now some broker, with some account, I go, okay, boom, boom. I'm actually going to drop it on the top of that because I'm just, instead of drawing a, a, a line for supply zone or demand zone or all these different kind of ways people view the market, um, this seller's up there. Are they powerful enough to stop me out with an 80 pip stop before I make my 40 pips? Now, this goes against conventional wisdom because I'm just risking dollars here. I'm saying if I grab a bad ratio, I'm giving the market dollar, I'm giving it room, but in a hard dollar risk. I know I'm risking $40. I mean, accept the risk up front. So there's really no um, type of stress in placing the order you know from the standpoint of like oh my god this is so scary so it is scary when you see that wick and you say hmm this month i might have blown up an account or stopped out like and also said this is untradeable it's only because you've built up, this is the weekly, it's only because you've built in your mind how the market should be, and how, not how it really is. And volatility matters. So on the weekly, you can't perceive the danger, or, well, who lives on a monthly basis, right? I mean, some people are going to be dead soon trading this shit. I mean, this maybe this is why there's uh, all these people that were uh, dying from this uh, virus obviously were traders then nobody would take the other side of the trade turns out all the um remember when the bankers are jumping off roofs and everybody's focused on that i don't know it, I, i've heard every one of these kind of like hey look at that over there oh wow dude don't look too close okay it's just gonna lo lose yourself in the carpet uh patterns don't look down when you're doing uh mushrooms You'd be there in a fucking loop like that Biden where he's standing in front of the camera. What the fuck happened there? His wife had to tug him away. Then he came back like a reset, like some fucking bobblehead. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess 
you know, you have to have your wits about you a little bit. You hope, right? But the market finds a way of cleaning house. And when it goes into a spaz attack, there had to have been. And so you have to ask yourself, what's the cause of this giant uh, uh, wick, you know? I'd say that um, the epicenter is going to be on the one-minute chart. I mean, or it's going to start at some place and start to go unstable from an up and down basis. It doesn't matter. So directionality doesn't matter. It only matters for, did it go up before it went down? So that is kind of a key thing. Are you being, um, are you, which direction are you going? So is that curve? And of course, for the, uh, the guy with the fragile thing, it's, it's about, this curve he has, okay, because he's an option trader and it matters whether you're writing or whether you wrote the call or you you bought it. So because also right now premiums on um, all options are starting to slightly, t I mean, they're starting to tighten up because at the end of the month, it's like it never happened. On the daily chart, it's a double bottom. I'm sorry, the monthly chart is a double bottom according to, or it's it's coming back to fair value. It's closed in between um, near the lower range, right? But this is just this one piece of data that we have. We, we If we just uh, delete the wicks, and some people would delete that wick. The wick's almost perfectly um, a 300-pip wick from the top. Um, this, not from the body up here. So there's a lot going on in this chart because the, I think that you have to have a trade plan for things you see. How would you have done it? People could talk all day long like, yeah, I know there was buyers down here, but when this was screaming down at 200 pips and you're already down $1,000, are you going to buy more? Well, if you already decided to buy more, would you let it buy more? Would you expose yourself to a pending limit order down here? That's a different kind of person than a person that's babysitting this thing, sitting on a beach waiting and waiting and waiting, get a sunburn, waiting and waiting for a ship to come in with all the bikini girls for the prop firm that failed because everybody uh, died of a virus in there. Um, it could have been chlamydia or whatever, I don't know. Whatever, whatever is the proper firm uh, liabilities are. <laughs> I guess you could put the dust six feet away in the prop firm and put booze. Yeah, that's why they had cubicles, right? No, isn't that why they invented cubicles in the first place? What the fuck, people? So, uh, but here, you know, um, all the talk about Gartley's and stuff, nothing protect you from these wicks. Okay, that, a, lot of, a lot of analysis is on closing prices. A lot of people haven't been able to come up with a indicator that can kind of just scan and go there you go you get in there and even if you get in there these alarm system things beep oh time to put i mean signal service says bye what you got people picking out your meals too I just press this thing a month every month they send me a meal and it could be like ground up insects they understand insects is like the high-end superfood right i'm not eating insects okay i'm not on some paper towel here just put it the right amount of seasoning and anything i mean with the right amount of high-end seasoning but i mean let's go from the monthly to the weekly and see just how it completely destroys any trade any kind of because this is the oldest one, is that you built this amazing indicator and then people go, you know, it works really good on the four-hour chart. You should see it on the two-hour chart. No, I'm sorry, the three-and-a-half-hour chart. And this is also the, um, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So if you're able to buy and sell at the market, which is an in-the-moment decision as opposed to a planned-out trade where you sit back and go, you know, I don't have to be in the market. I don't even have to be in this trade. Because I'm robust, I have money in the account, no fills. Every time you put a pending in or pull the trigger, 
if you're going to put a stop on that order that you pull the trigger, you can see here, even if you didn't put the stop on a 10K and you only had like two grand in this account, you would notice that. Also, another uh, bullshit thing about this um, concept of consistent trading and consistently making money, that only exists where you have a governor, a throttle uh, stop point. So it's a hard stop on risk. Um, if you're only going to drop 10 scripts a day and you're going to drop them every eight hours and last for eight hours, you have a constant risk. That's uh, something maybe um, the alarm system. Now, I mean, if you just by routine at three o'clock in the morning, you drop a rack of 12 hour scripts and you don't touch them all day long. You may never get filled. I mean, it's a waste of time, I'm sure, for people to think, why would I put an order right now 200 pips deep? Well, you wouldn't. But as this thing's unfolding, in hindsight, as you look at this thing, you think, oh, shit, I would have had to sell um, to make money on this from um, like deep vacuum theory, is that this top is very important because it actually pretty bullish. And it's also William's fractal. It, you know, it, in other words, he's waiting for five bars to. I just need one bar. If it's up, I'm selling. If it's down, I'm buying. Now, it's this is where people just uh, come on. They don't, they don't understand. Would I buy here? Yeah. Can I say this is this is the fork in the road right here? So I can already see uh, what uh, feel what people are going to think about that. It's too simplistic. Okay, what have I left out? Well, here is here is the uh, the issues with uh, trading. So it, this now you can't get around this. This is about risk. Um, this, okay, so you just can't get around it. What what you also can't get around is that if there's not enough money in the account to sell this. Um, spot here there, let me do that like that um so this tops and uh, uh or this move here so this is all i need the only data i need to trade with is uh in the kind of most um full risk but not really still got a hard stop on it if every time it's up 200 pips i go you know what i got a trade plan for up 200 pips watch this and that's what i'm saying this whole time is what I've been trying to say is that look for a move that it closed up 200 pips. That's my, the, the, the narrowest criteria in the world. It's up 200. I got a trade plan for that. What I do is I sell at the market with a 200 pip stop. And if it's up 200 pips in two days or Three, now this is another as soon as you change change this one more number from I'm gonna sell if it's up two days and one days and three and that's it that's it this system relies on dynamic what's really going on what just really went on and, and I mean it's at the market trading here you're buying it's obvious isn't it down you buy. Now, it's not down at the rate of change that this is down. Um, this big, hairy down move. Could you have bought that and made money? Now, this is the fork in the road. Well, I bought this, and you said it, it's been down you buy. Right. It's Now it's down 300. You got to put the 300 pip stop in. I know. I know nobody wants to think about this. That you just went from risking 200 to 300 in your mini lot. Or for the baby traders, you know, 30, 20 bucks to make 30 bucks. 1K. Not a bad trade. A lot of, mo I mean, a lot of pips, right? And you bought here, and you're like, oh, yeah, I got to stop here. I'm good. You were good. 
it was down this. This is the measured move theory of trading. It's, it's another 50 to go. Now it could keep pounding down, but did it keep pounding down here? Nope. This is another coronavirus scare here. This is classic. Alex Jones is already saying it, which I think it's true. I don't know what he says. The Brits are like, yeah, it's over. Let's let's go back to the subways. Come on, start banging people. They're propped from going. That's all right. Got the ladies ready to, um, you know, there's there's a big opportunity there. So as soon as you just do this, all I did was put more data on the screen. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I see another trade. Um. So if it's down big, you have to risk big. If it's up big, you got to risk big. Your risk is fluctuating. People say, I don't want that. I want to find a holy grail, and what I want to do there is I want to put like a 2% risk. How many times do you think you're ever going to see data like this in your life? Ever again. It's going to be a while. Okay, it may happen forever and ever. Maybe I'll just heat up and go ballistic. But there's a threshold. Obviously, we've reached it. The pandemic. That's what's causing all that volatility. Sure is. Jimmy Bob, he put a sail limit up in here, though. He's so clever. You know how long you waited for that trade to fill? No, tell me. I was going to tell you anyways. Nine months. Damn. He sat on the porch, big fat limit up here. He put a stop up here. He goes, yeah, this is, I know it's the goober stop. I know I should sell more up there too. And that's another controversy. Another risk. More vulgarity. More risk. Risque. All right, this is the problem. It's very not, trading's dirty. Okay. That's why you need the, that special prop house. This top is very important. And so is this. So why did we only spend a little bit of time up in here? And why were people shitting their pants if they were short up here? So some people will say, well, son, if you had the balls to sell into that rally, but did you have to have the balls? Because you, you know there was going to be a big deal about this one. You know it. Just like this. I, now, this was left behind, and we'd have to go to the weekly to see the narrative here, but what really happened? Because that little mini vac, then ultra vac started here. That's in my uh, page three of my course, ultra vac. I mean, this is this is just so dramatic, and never made it to here now. Somebody was trading really small, and they've only been making four dollars a week, but they finally made forty bucks this week. Look at that, right? So that's another thing. Oh well, shit! If it works like that, can I just put a bunch of money in that account and trade it? No, because you'd blow that account up if you put a forty million dollar position in here. And you could, you could make these tickets. These are all one Ks. Uh, point zero one. And yeah, you could keep actually uh, brokers. Some brokers have a limit how many actual tickets you can have pending. So that's something to consider. And what is your? Are you going to get tendonitis dragging a drop in these puppies like this? You know, every time you have to grab one of these. But here's a 36 pip range, 10 pips. Now here, I would have to if I'm going to scalp it, and I don't want to wait that line to get filled i'm gonna have to put these orders right on top of the market just like this um i don't know why that didn't load in there all right i think it loaded i just can't see it here, let me go let me go oh shit i just got froze out of the uh, platform here or something okay let me start over i'll delete these objects um 
I can't I can't see the new tickets come in. So this is the month this is the monthly. Go to the weekly. And it, oh it's just so I, I got too close to it spread there. Um on the weekly you can see that the trade was a winning trade. It, you really can't verify it on the monthly because you don't know what happened on this hammer last month. And the candlestick thing is so time frame dependent that even after you have your trade plan written for the doji, is that a one minute doji with a 10 pip stop? Or is that a monthly doji with a thousand pip stop? And is that how you're going to trade it? So what, what, what what's so annoying about all the videos that people do about trading is they never talk about what it would really cost to do that. Like, so here, uh, build your own guitar. Okay, what is it really going to cost you? Are you going to use the high-end wood? And are you going to fuck it up? It, like, if you made 10 guitars, are you going to pick five of the really good ones? If it's like making cookies and you're going to do an advertisement, are you going to pick the, the the cookie that looks like not too edible? God, man. The fragility of or people's um, knee-jerk reactions to stuff. You know, if people are dying, okay, I'm just going to, I mean, this is, this is the truth of it. If I heard that Joe across the street just fell over, spit, uh, you know, like adrenaline strain, uh, powdered blood, I'd be like, I think I'm staying today. Or if I did go out, I'd be like, I don't think I'm going to be, um, I don't get too close. I typically don't get too close to people. I don't even want to hear what there's. I mean, I'm like, oh my God. Like, I mean, I was in Starbucks in California. I was like, really? Dude, you smell like urine. Now, now the people that were over by him, I don't even, I don't know how they tolerated it. Like, or were they just trying to like take one for the team? Is that how liberal they are out there? Like, yeah, we just, we just endure that. This is how we roll. Um, nothing's too gritty for us. We're very bohemic. But look at this market. Oh my God. People step away from the trading terminals and, the weekly. This is so profound. This is Max Zoom in on a Meta Trader platform. 100 pips on the big black lines, 25 pips on the skinny lines. Wow. Happy New Year. So you're into this new year with a bang. There's a lot of pent up demand. And now the pent up demand is a tr real thing. Trump is is not anti-science i like how they're gonna take him and say he's anti-science because he's like yeah we're just gonna go back to living i know you have black mold in your house and it killed you or you lost your mind and you saw patterns in the carpet but dude come on you can't just close the rest i get the restaurants are not the most um, best way to eat food with people and they're taking pictures of it let's not forget the transmission of people taking pictures of their food and posting on facebook you know digital if there's ghosts then there's digital transmission ghosts and so this um also if you look at this top end of the year and then this is about the same time palladium was having its frothy move it was above this, and that was pretty profound and uh, not long-lasting. And if you took the theory of selling, if you have a trade plan for this, which I don't know if I would sell here, but maybe for the scalp, but i definitely sell here. And this sells different. Why? 300 pips up. I'm going to pull out my 300 pips stop. I'm going to sell one at the market. Now, I know this is the old, like, you can't make money just making 30 bucks. Actually, this was not a bad trade. It's made like a hundred bucks on a one k. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just un.
But anybody that's ever traded in their life, why <laughs> these this last um, the beginning of this year, we're not even. Well, we're we're um, we're a uh, third of the way through, and this is how people start off. They're so rich, they're so fucking wealthy that if they get sick, and they built this dominoes up for themselves in New York all these fucking people in here and china all these goddamn people okay you know and supposedly this is an engineered thing that somebody working in a lab maybe they're okay so here's the unmalevolent universe unevil um the way i'm looking at it is that okay maybe this is an engineered thing but uh how about the fact that um somebody could have made one to try to kill it in other words so you make a enemy you simulate an enemy and then you say oh we got the cure so if this ever does happen we'll be heroes and we've created defense me mechanisms for things that we have to create the enemy first to design the defense mechanism so it's like simulated trading so maybe that's true but for god's sakes if that is true then we only have ourselves to blame. People are killing themselves or they're blowing shit up in the lab and it got out. All right, it got out. Um, can't we just say, stay away from people? Um, just, you don't close your restaurant. You know, the fire marshal has this thing uh, that says only so many people. And I get that you're serving food. Okay, well, make it well done. I don't know. Or, um yeah i mean maybe so i guess the fragility is that you opened a restaurant and that's your only gig and that always has been it that has always been the issue with every endeavor so trading is no different trading you, ha you actually have the ability to spread your risk so thin and so thick whatever you want you cannot do that in the restaurant business you can't say well we're going to scale down this restaurant so that it's just like six people apart and the whole building's going to turn into cubicles we have a switch we can hit and it just goes into like virus mode they don't have that but traders do and they can do those kind of antics here they can do these um robots can trade it for you and I don't think it would be hard to build a robot that says, if it's up 300 pips, sell at the market with a 30 pip stop. And that robot trades once every seven years. Then you take another robot and you build them so if the market's up 100 pips in four hours, he's going to sell at the market. At some point, all these robots... Or other people that have those trade plans, if you think people are robots or people are supposed to be these uh, consistent money-making machines, but only in, only if you have a money machine that you keep plugging in $1,000 of risk and it might pay out 2000 every month. So that machine makes 1000 bucks a month. But it's mechanical trading. It's a machine. Machine view is at the market. And so is... Um, a volatility breakout system that says if it is not moving we are going to load in the biggest fucking hedge you ever saw okay that's the that's how i see this fragile guy he's saying well i can bank on the fact that we're not going to go sideways forever there are things that you're banking on if they kick me out of one leg of this thing market's going sideways here now in this scenario or in this trade plan of breakout i'm only gonna make money from this move or i could get in here that's the weekly chart it's hard to believe i know it this is the weekly chart we pause we get a doji obvious weekly candlesticks open to close we have so much data there from an auctioneer standpoint we're below here we're, we're 200 pips into this hall. The scalpers get out here. If they're scalping into the hall, we fell in. The bulls, the bulls, bullish scalpers, people that buy low and sell high, the 
people that sell because it's just up with that trade plan that robot's going to get clobbered because he can't see structure that's okay that's the that's the risk you take in having a moron i mean a true imbecile that cannot see when you say give me another pencil so you tell your your your, your secretary get me another pencil and she brings some stubby little fuck. I wanted a new pencil. What are you fucking nuts? What are you joking with me? She just brings you the eraser. That's the problem with these robots. And that's a problem that's always going to be if you don't, if you can't see the context of the current price into the history of the voids, of the deep vac. Because these are like, I mean, I'm sure a lot of systems that were trend systems that tr follow a trend with a moving average on closing, they're like, oh, yeah, we're selling. We're loving it. Now, they probably have a trailing protection. Buy stop, buy stop. Oh, triggered. Plus, this vacuum is now filled, right? This little mini vac's filled to here. All the um, people that gobble this trade, they, they trade the whole cup and handle. They don't even trade past the handle. They just trade the cup. They got their orders in here. They're catching a falling knife. Then we have the confirmation goobers. Buy, stop, guys. Buy, stop, cancel, replace. Buy, stop, cancel, replace. Oh, look, honey, we just got filled. Now maybe their target's here. And they're like, fuck, we should have stayed through this. Well, if you're looking at this hole, and that's your next target, is to start selling there. Those guys sold there at the market. But that's not enough. Actually, they they never got stopped out of that because if they're selling because it's up 300 with a 300 pip stop, they survived that last blast. So I'll zoom out one level and then go to the... Um, the daily chart so we go like this I always zoom out first because it's going to be very disorientating when you go on the daily you're going to lose the context of coming all the way back to uh, May of 2019 wow looks like a Ranko chart compared to that other shit this is why people that take and put all the moving averages on there they got to keep zooming out to find their entries. They got to keep zooming out and zooming out. And they're like, dude, this is like looking out in the water. Pick a wave to surf. Now we can choose our surfboard size here. We don't have to be stuck with the waves. We have to wait on the beach for the big wave. We can change our size to be a little baby guy on a little baby surfboard. That's the magic of size. Peanuts. You could drown in peanuts. I was watching one of these uh, forensic files or something. This guy was, uh, this kid was in a grain silo. And I thought, God, that grain could really suffocate you? It's like quicksand. Yeah, size, it adds up. Certainly one peanut in there is not going to bother you. I don't know where that comes in on the uh, man versus nature, uh, fragile, anti-fragile, but I guess your organic thing in a silo and um, the peanuts become robust on you. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, pressing up against the wall there. So in the daily chart, now I kind of live, I mean, the daily charts, a turtle trader could make a mint until the volatility gets out of control. So he's, he's plotting along here, and he's like, you know what? I don't know, dude. Low volatility. Let's just, let's just put in a hedge. I get stopped out of my cell a lot. Eh, looks like it's going up. I made money. Let's do a cancel replace on the stop. Okay, so I'm here. Market's here. I'm up. Cancel replace. Oh. Oh, I got too tight. Now, if your stop trail's here, you ride this whole thing. Now, no offense to the people that, I mean, there are people that built 
This is February. Don't forget. So this is this is the New Year. I'm sorry, New Year's back here, and then you have this guys that it just so happens their algorithm said sell, and they wrote this down perfectly with the same trailing sell stop. Good trade, man. That algo you wrote is so fucking great. How is it not? How people cannot see that they just curve fitted a perfect trade plan to this rate of change and they will not take this trade because this rate of change is too much or maybe they did get on here. This would probably perked up the no nonsense people. There's enough volume, enough movement, and the VIX or whatever's uh, gone up, right? But at this point, the VIX is spiking and people are probably going along. Maybe. The losers. Let's just speak of losers and winners. Who loses on this trade? The guy that goes, you know, look at this nice strong trend. Here's your pullback, your perfect pullback. I expect another measured move. Um, I'll buy this pullback. Anybody, anybody have a problem with seeing how that you could lose on that? If you're looking for winning, back testing, winning. How about back testing how to lose your ass? Right. If if uh, the curve, the concavity, just invert it. You know, a lot of people do better if they trade it against themselves. So you really, so this is the big perverse part about the risk of trading is that you're going to have to do things. It, it's kind of like uh, that you didn't think you'd have to do. And that's go against yourself. Um and be objective instead of having a directional opinion. As soon as your filter is, I don't trade if we have a 100 pip day, or I do trade if we have a 100 pip day. I think that's the filter. The ultimate filter is not volume. It's price fluctuation over time. Can I expose myself to eight hours of $40 risk? So if I put a buy limit in, like this i'm saying okay for the next eight hours man if they can ram that thing down there i'm getting in this is the daily chart this is the daily chart that order looks insane it looks way too tight so since we can't trade the left side of the chart we can talk about this volatility and what um, was it even tradable? You can see that people that were able to trade with a hundred pip stop could have bought. Well, this this move here is actually one day two hundred pips down. You would buy with a two hundred pip stop, and you made your two hundred pips right. You made it all the way back to. It's a totally equal dippity do, and once it's below this. And this has to be the monster fractal, right? This is almost like a low. Think of this as being lower than this, and I know the guys with the higher highs and higher highs and lower lows and stuff like this and these kind of just tongue twisters that people get. There's books, and it goes on and on. The truth is, is that this top mattered. And this is the daily chart with no indicators other than price. Price is your only indicator. All indicators are built on price. So theoretically, why wouldn't you just look at price? Because girls look really good with really nice clothes on. <laughs> like you could take a girl who's like not that uh, you could, fashion, right? It's the fashion. And so how you make money is the style you're trading. Like, are you, are you a guy that wants to trade small with wide stops or tight, big orders with tight stops? Because big orders with wide stops is like, you, you're just not going to have enough money for the, um, you got to survive. So you have to scalp some of these 
entries. You can't just load up. I mean, in your dream mind, you want to load up down here and say, yeah, nice trade. Now, you could do that. But wouldn't you rather just take your first 100 pips off the table? Your first 10K comes off and you let the other 20K ride? And you move your stop. They called it the free trade. You move your stop to break even. And now it's really, you sit back now, it's, it's painful for me to watch this make money. Because at this point, if I'm up three grand, I'm like, that's good. I'm, I'm good with three grand. I could have stayed for another. Yeah, okay, well, if that's the case, once you are able to trade um, from more than one ticket standpoint, you already got your sell limits pending up here. You could go flat here and then engage again uh, here on sells. Here we know the trade plan. Sell at the market with a stop here. So we're short. I'm just going to buy this as it comes back down. For the bounces. So if I miss this top, this sell, and if I miss selling here, I could still sell again here. I have my sell limits here. Now I could do a completely symmetrical trade plan based on volatility. I'm trying to get this robot to recognize the um, the amount of the move. I know it sounds simple. I'm just going to have to spell it out in some non-rambling, concise thing to somebody that knows how to write it. But uh, And, of course, it's rarely going to trade if its criteria is set to ridiculous numbers like 300 pips down. I've, te I've tested a static version. If you say... Okay, man, throw some limits out there. Now, the people that had limits set uh, into uh, this daily chart and, uh, like I said, the uh, at-the-market trades, um, you're waiting for the end of the day. You don't have to wait for a limit. I can place these orders right now uh, for the next eight. I don't think I'm going to get filled. But I can put all these tickets in like this. It just racks upon racks. And if I just keep tallying up, I know that's $40 risk to make $30, okay? These are numbers we can get our brain around. I'm going to risk um, 50 bucks to make 28 Some of these I tried to build in the fact that... Uh, but that doesn't mean that that's going to... The scenario, we have to plunge into the limits and retrace without stopping out any tickets. The probability of getting stopped out of a, a 10 pip stop, that's the, that's the daily, four hour. Here's the four hour. Now the four hour looks like they could fill me. This is a whole different world than the daily chart. This is a scalper's chart. In my opinion, this is scalpable because what you're going to do here is you're going to trade backwards you're going to trade against the money managers because the money managing systems that try to protect profits are going to you can see it on here that if uh, okay somebody buys because it went down for four hours they buy here. Their system comes in. Now your systems are running like a 50 pip stop. A 40 pip stop. It makes, at the end of four hours, it's up, it sells. It's out, that criteria of that robot is we're out. Now you say, okay, well, let's back test that. Well, the problem with the back testing is that if we do the same thing here, we're, we're ignoring the wicks here. It's down X. Every time it's down 25 pips, we get in with a stop like this. Now if it's up, it sells. It didn't ride that big move. That is a simple trade plan that I just crashed 
Uh, uh, do I have to really back test that? You know the criteria. Now here, it's down. It does the same thing it buys. And it makes money on this trade, though. Right? Because it's slightly down, buys. When it's up big, or just up. You can't make it. It could say that it's up by X. Or maybe the robot comes in and does a trailing step really tightly. But the reason why that doesn't work, as you can see, if I bought here, with a stop here, they stop me out. So you, a scalper is going to put buy limits in here, or I'm going to do that for the scalps. I'm going to buy this. So when I see the market up in this, it's picked up all these sellers in this this vacuum. Right, this goes on and on every chart on every time frame. Right, so here's the. The 25 pip stop on. Then we take off like a rocket. But we're always going to see it wicks back and it rallies up. It's how much it 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 dips. They stop hunted this guy. If this guy got in here, he bought this pullback. He puts a stop in. It's up. He's like like this trade. And if he held it to here, he would have made money. But he um, had too tight a stop. Came back, they crushed him. He didn't get another signal to go along. Because this pullback wasn't... I'm just speaking of this one robot. Or this one guy. Didn't pull back deep enough. This is a deeper pullback. It was triggered here to buy, here not. And here, the moving average have already crossed over. Who makes money from this trade? The robot that says, I'm looking for a 50 pip pullback. In eight hours, um, he can't see the structure here that this is like uh, kind of like climbing or making higher highs and all that bullshit. Doesn't matter. The making higher highs doesn't matter. What are you doing this four hours? Okay, I'm buying. But I already bought this on limits, right? Because I'm buying this stop pot. I'm going to buy this whole thing. And I'm going to make money from this. If I buy this, I'm out of something. In, in 20, 50 pips, I've made 40, 80, whatever, 90, 1,000. I'm out. I'm good. I put in more trailing limits in. Not a not a good fill. Not not is not as good. And then do I have to go to the one hour chart? Yes. And this is why people end up on the one minute chart. Well, if that's good, then just keep going down lower and reduce your risk. Okay. At some point, if your spread's too wide, you're just your shipping and handling is too much. The spread is too brutal. Even though. Visually, it looks like a winning trade because, oh, look at this. Your robot could have come in here and bought this at the market, and this is your only chance to board the train in a, in a pullback sense from a trend. Traders are like a, you know, I I should have bought more here. And, um, okay, so how can you, without breaking a rule of buy low, sell high, it pulls back, you buy. <laughs> you don't need an indicator for that. That is the indicator, the one period moving average. I, I, I know that you want to keep searching for the holy grail and, and um, it's just goofball stuff. It, it's not how you would make, um, it, 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 it's okay for entertainment purposes, but for making money and just living every day and saying, here's a market to trade. And I know how many people just didn't trade their algos because they're like, well, with the coronavirus, I just don't know if I want to put a trade. I don't know. I don't even know, but I'm sure people, from what I used to see on that No Nonsense Discord, people would say stuff like they're coming out with jobs report tomorrow. Okay, but you, you can all see the 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 unemployment rate goes up and the market goes up. Wait a minute, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> that's why fundamentals are like. People are panic selling stocks. It's a panic. It's irrational prices. 
yes, if you're in that, if you're on that ship, if you're on the Diamond Princess and everybody ends up raping each other with Corona, then yes, that, that with Corona beers, of course. I mean, you know, and they run out of lube, sanitizer. Yeah, it's not fun for anybody on that cruise line that just wanted to, like, sit by the pool. And that's what's happened to this market. And people that aren't prepared for it. It's just, you just got to giggle. <sighs> the Rogue Wave guy. Didn't we learn from the Rogue? I, I, you know, I checked the market. Of course, this was like, uh, this could have got away from somebody too. I don't know if this is as roguish. This looks like a kind of an ordinary sell-off. I don't natural gas is pretty tough. There's, <laughs> That's a that's a futures contract. That's not something you can just put stops on. But here's a guy who, and no nonsense, is going to go out and write a book and go on tour. You know, people have made mil a million dollars from telling their horror stories, so maybe that's how you make money, right? But no, I do think you can make money if you have a trade plan for volatility. That is the key. These markets... Like, look at this sell-off here. You're honestly going to tell me this isn't, like, the most profound um, volatility you can find on this chart is from here to here. That's just pure psychosis. But if you were looking at, at this thing in the proper context, as you zoom out, you're like, oh, wait a minute. That happens a lot. Oh, wait. What about this up here? And this is when you're like, oh, man, look at this move. This is vicious. Look at that. But why does this viciousness stop? What is the cause? This key level, just below 100 pips in this window here. So it's a buck 10. We're 10 cents above the, uh, and that's a roller coaster, too. <laughs> But we can't do anything about those past moves. I'm quite okay with getting in for the uh, duration of four hours, eight hours for a move of 50 pips. Here, it's not hard to do. But you got to have an on-the-fly trade plan. This is the one-hour chart. And on this thing, it's another world. It's such a whole different world. I mean, we have to admit that these are vicious moves on the daily. This, I mean, this is hourly, but I can see the day's stripes. And this is where the trade plans make more sense, in my opinion, from the daily. If you drop these orders to last all day, there was a high here. This is the exact high two days in a row. comes all the way to here, and this is why... I want to, um, I think a one-hour robot, I'm sorry, a team of one-hour robots is the way to go. Or if you're going to do it. Um, I have 25 pips on these skinny lines. I can see my trade plans on the right. Here's a 10-pip window. For eight hours, I'm going to just go like this and we get right up on the market. I'm saying... In eight hours, can we make it down here? And I'll I'll put a, a pack of orders right here. So this is, to me, this is the holy grail. I know what I'm risking. I could put all these fucking tickets in and fuck these fuckers. I'm sick and tired of babysitting these markets. So if we sell above the high, and here's the one-hour chart, right? I can zoom out. I can see the whole drama. When people look at this, they go, I'll well, put a 21 EMA on that. Yeah, you could trade it like that. But we know that that's going to look like. You can't make a living from doing that. I mean, you can't make consistent money. How about consistent small money? Consistent big money is too fragile. You're putting all your eggs in one basket. I guess the guy could have just said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. 
Let me delete all these objects here. So now the other beauty of uh, trading this stuff is that you can trade, um, I don't know how accurate the uh, playback is on um, running a robot inside MT4 because I get different results at different time frames, but you can just turn it on with a crude bot and just trade it. Know what you're going to do Monday. Know what you're going to do on Tuesday. This is the one-hour chart of a line chart. If we put a 20 EMA on that, that's what the bankers institutionals trade. You're like, yeah, that would look like this, wouldn't it? And I could just sell every rally into this. Uh, that's a good trade plan. And then this, okay, we lost a little bit because it just got all harebrained. And, you know, by the moving average, by the time moving average, I realized what was going on, you know. A little laggy and, oh, I kind of missed the reversal. That's why no nonsense does not trade this. This he doesn't buy it out here. He's not going to buy this and sell that. He's not going to make. The, he's not going to trade this hundred pip window or fifty pip window or twenty five pip window. This is one big down day. Now here, you'd have to go to the fifteen minute chart to trade that move. Or did you just say I'm going to buy in this below this low? I'm going to lay a grid in, and then I'm going to cash out here. Now, here the four-hour chart is going to be the filter for your entry. So here you you can't trade this the way you would trade the four-hour chart because now well, you, you're going to trade bigger. I mean, this is riskier because now if you say, well, every time it's up X, I'm going to sell. Now you've got a winning hedge locked in. If you didn't get stopped out and you haven't taken your profit on those tickets. So it's up, you sell, it's down, you buy. If you have tight stops and um, you keep getting stopped out, now you're just kind of getting a nickel and dime to death. A death of a thousand cuts in spread and commission and, and slippage. So there's got to be a balance point between trading the 30 second chart of course if you have like i said if you have zero spreads you have some big gold account and you're trading really big and you're actually making money i mean you could say well i'm just going to take my three dollars and leave which is you know that's how you do that never losing trades you're taking small trade small profits let your profits run it could blow your fucking account up or you could just you could get destroyed uh, or you could lose out on profits because you, you let them run and you're like, um, you never got out. There's so many bad things that can happen with these stupid phrases. I mean, if you let your profits run, then what? You ran a trailing stop and protected them? Or you let them run and then they ran back and you're like, shit, we could have got out like three hours ago. And I'm never going to see that price again and just watch it melt away. And uh, that, I guess that's why people want to use a robot because the robot's a disciplined trader or it's it's going to be um, responsible. It's responding constantly to what the data is where you might be sleeping or you drank too much or you had too many uh, Corona girls over, Corona challenged women, Coronally challenged. So yeah, this, this chart here... Um, People could probably see Gartley's in that. But I can only live here. So this is the one-hour chart. We might get filled here. So right here, I'm putting my orders on that wick. So that's my entry. I'm going to buy this plunge. So I'm just going to put racks and racks in here. That's like 200 bucks or something risk. I'm up to like, adds up pretty quick. Zoom out one level. Okay. So this is a different view than this. I see this as like 
that looks like it's going to fill. This looks like, mm, really? My brain switches like that. And then here I go, yeah, I like it. So it, once you get there, you're like, I don't think they're going to fill me. Here I think they, they're they not going to fill me. And then here I'm like, for some reason this looks like, just because of the way it's framed, it's kind of strange how that just plays tricks on you because uh, now if you're moving averages, I'm a risk taker, so I want to get in the market. But if you have a moving average that's like this, you're not even going to consider this trade until it dips below. I think that's actually, if you're going to trade a moving average, what you're looking for is to go above. right? When it's head, when it's head uh, this is Alexander Elder trading, but he's so conservative in his entry. I think he changed this thing to spike when he realized that, yeah, you just got to get in here. You know, you just got to get in at the top of this thing. So if this is your moving average, when it goes here, the only time this is brutal is that, well, the only time you're going to really not make money is the market's going too fast. Now your criteria doesn't work, and you buy this pullback, and then they crush you here. Something like that. You can see that all the zigzags are going to really uh, destroy your robot. Or your totally tweaked out, tuned in algorithm, which just means one rhythm. Dude, you need 10 algorithms. You can't have one. But like, yeah, if you if you, if you got the cushion of a prop house behind you and your filter, you probably didn't even trade some of the stuff that happened. But boy, did you miss out, huh? Yeah, that's why fear of missing out is a real thing because you fucking missed out. I'm buying there at the market on the one hour. Why? Because it's been down. Simple trade plan. If it's down here, you buy. Here's a losing trade. We, we don't have to back test this. Here's a top. Becomes a bottom. Pull back. I buy. They stopped me out. It's all right. I got buys in here. Got a backup plan. All this preppers. On. Where's the prepper traders? No, the Holy Grail algorithm written stuff. Still waiting. It's 8.20 in the mar morning. We're still waiting for the markets to open. Stock market. Here's a nice kickback run. Come back, stop, hunt. This guy's got a super tight stop. Or it's just, you know, liquidity, vacuum. What do you want to call it? Doesn't matter. But you see this pattern over and over again. Trailing sell stops, protecting your, your long position. Stop you out, make a big run. Stop you out, make a big run. Slap you in the face, so buy that. Put a buy limit here. Here's a nice chunk. Nice deep vacuum. This even worked out. Here's a 25 pip vacuum. Sell it. Make 50. Buy it. So, If you're going to trail now, these are 8 hours and up these tickets. I think I have some here that are shorter. And if they're shorter, then you can drop them more frequently. So my high-frequency robot would be putting in one-hour scripts, and I've tested this stuff, and without a money management, without a money management uh, aspect of the robot, which is really what makes the robot super robust, is that it's protecting its profits. I have a ATR breakout bot that that's free that I got for free. So I've just been tweaking it. And uh, I noticed that um, in certain conditions, and of course this has to do with volatility, certain market conditions, this robot just kills it because it keeps trailing a stop. And it may only make like eight pips, but it wins almost, you know, it's constantly grabbing what the market will allow it to do because when the market takes off and rips, if it goes, if the volatility kicks up, it's really gonna it's really gonna choke that uh, keep getting stopped out. It's never gonna let the profits run. So that's the other problem. And there's a lot of problems um, with this one trick pony uh, approach that people are trying to algo out the market. But I don't know. 
maybe that's like I said that that you're just trying to make ten percent. That's okay. But if you're really trying to give yourself some padding and give yourself um, a little more stability because you're able to scalp and you're able to swing a trade. In other words, you can open an account that is just going to sit there and barely make money and barely lose money and barely make money. So that kind of account is a different mindset and um, uh, it's like owning stocks or something, like say buying um, Boeing at $100 a share. So if you just said, I'm going to buy it at 100 I'll put a limited in at um, $80 a share. I'll put a limit in at $60 a share. Even that right there. I mean, people that went and traded stocks, you could have a pending buy limit that was in these markets, and you just got filled. You just wake up one morning, you're like, holy shit, look at all this shit I just bought. Granted, some of it's underwater, but you've already retraced. And then they come up with these numbers. I don't know why the news does this. They always do these numbers like, it's the biggest rally ever. Yeah, dude, in points, because the market trade's so fucking expensive now that it doesn't mean anything. It's the biggest unemployment numbers. Dude, there's so many fucking people employed. My God, fucking A. You pull back off the top of that. It's the biggest point moving. Gold's been at 2,000, man. Ranges dictate the next. Are people just have no clue of how to look at things in a, in a, it's, everything has to be so hyped. It's the biggest point moving. There's never been a point. I mean, the thing's so many points now. It's inflation. Now, I could see the inflation coming in just before. Slight inflation. And this is supposedly going to be inflationary. All these people. All these paychecks. Yeah, maybe. It's not inflation. The price of a microphone has not changed. In 40 years. 40 years, okay. Microphones are $100 a microphone. What is that? Gas changes price. Food keeps going up. Why's the microphone's on? 100 bucks. You go anywhere, huh? It works. Um, God, the people are using these microphones now. They're like penny. A penny's a high-end mic on these little headsets. So this is the classic buy window, euro dollar, one hour chart. But I'm not going to get in heavy. I got so much exposure if this thing wicks down when the news comes out. When they blow up this vote. Because some guy's going to grandstand. Some fucker. Well, I'm standing on principle. Dude, get the fuck out of our way. Go to your safe space and put on your fucking corona helmet. Breathe into the mask. Breathe deep. The gallery, the gallery of gloom. So, you know, these people, oh my God, they just love it. They love the drama of it all. Okay, so some people got sick, <laughs> Omar's. So some people got sick. Things happened. Some people did something. My God, man. But look at this thing climbing out of the hole. It does kind of track with the stock market in a way. Sometimes it correlates, sometimes it doesn't. This is another thing. People are like, I've got eight screens. I've got, you don't need eight screens. Unless you're going to be in eight trades. And then you're going to watch them all simultaneously. Your brain can't do it. It's already been proven. You cannot, your brain can only focus on one thing at a time. Sure, you can multitask. You could be having sex while driving. But, can you really trade? Eh, maybe trade in. Yeah. Double clicking, driving, sex, all at the same time. All right, it could hamper your trading. Honey, I'm scalping right now. We're going to make a left. Oh, wait. 
That's uh, Corona County. So now they're going to divide the world in the counties. You, you, you're going you're gonna to have to get a passport to go. <laughs> I'm working on the new. What in what are the Americans doing? <laughs> Trying to. All the woke people are like, oh, we're over woke. Okay, so you have the, what do they call it, the real ID? Certified with a little star on it. So they backed that off. The bureaucracy's taking a hit. They delay filing your taxes. Eh, you know what? Fuck your mortgage. Eh, fuck this, fuck that. No, really, fuck it. We'll go Star Trek mode. Just get on the ship, right? You don't need any fucking money on you ever see guys on Star Trek and you got twenty bucks for a my communicator's fucked up. I gotta get a repair. Can you can you can you cover my bill? So yeah, this is the sci fi world. Internet. I really don't notice much of a difference, honestly, just sitting here every day. I don't really notice it, but uh what are you gonna do? It's hampered everybody's existence on some level. So the Starbucks um, entertainment's gone, but uh, yeah, drive through. So now I'm kind of like, um, hey, what are you gonna do? This <laughs> is the way people are. What if they gave a war and nobody came? So what if they? This, and of course, one of the people gonna revolt. They're not. They're just so passively accepting. Okay, well, I guess so. Yeah. We just have to do it. Like, no more no more restaurants. Why are the restaurants so bad? Were people serving Corona? I want your Corona done. Eh, like, kind of like, uh, can you make it raw? I kind of like want to get sick as fast as I can. I haven't looked at the numbers here, but, yeah, it's already, the, the tail risk is gone on this Corona. We're done. It's all right. We're, we're, we locked in. We're running a trailing stop on those uh, on the dead people now. I think we're good. Um, watching it, watching the, and then, and then they got to fund the. Uh, they got all these like pork barrel spending. They're gonna put into this thing. Why do people have to put their two cents? I mean, if you just cut everybody a check, I'm sure they'd be happy, right? They'd be like, oh, look at this. It's fucking like uh, that Yank fuck. It's $200 past Yang. Look at that. Wow, they nailed it. And, of course, everybody can uh, relax and go back to their fucking Netflix and their Instagrams or whatever and their Facebooks and post their meals or eating you know you could kind of see the top of the market coming okay how can you tell it's the end of a trend people are posting what they're going to eat on facebook can see people see the problem with restaurants i, I just there's something going on there i don't know it's very uh anybody see the movie tom jones the eating uh scene so there's something really, people are just too spoiled and they're just too decadent. Going out to a fancy restaurant, $1,000 a plate. And then there's this guy, okay, nothing against British people or who this guy, there's a guy on the radio and listen to talk radio and this guy's like, save the food. Save the, I think he's saying save the food and I'm like, what in the fuck, dude? If you have a foreign accent, please do not raise your pitch because they will not be able to understand what the fuck you're saying. Dude, bring it down. What was it, Taylor Swift? You, you got to just stop. You got to calm down. Come on. All right, so um, a lot of crazy stuff going on, but um, for the people with objective views of price behavior, it doesn't matter where there's a virus or the Fed's doing this. It's about, wow, we better break out the 50 pip stops or we can't even trade this shit. It's untradeable with your 5 pip stop, which you think is low risk. No, they're just going to chop you to death. Even if it's a 1K, you're just going to keep getting hammered. If the spread goes to 1, and the spread's at 1 here, plus commissions. 
Still waiting for, oh, so here we go, 8.30. So we can go to the half hour chart, right? This logical choice at this time of day. Two minutes below, oh, past the bottom of the hour. Oh, jeez. Okay, lag time here. All right, so there you go. That looks doable. We could, could fill this eight-hour banks in here, and I'm going to put some more in now. So as time goes on, I look at this as like a farmer would. I'm planting. Uh, this is only a 3K here. It's very low risk, you know, exposure. Okay, that's a 10 pip window. Let's say um, a 10 pip window of 3K. And does this look like a risky trade? I'm going to put it right in the uh, where I perceive the vacuum hole. And here, would you, does this look like a good trade? Does it look like we're going to fill? I don't think we're going to fill. 30 minute chart, 8 hour script down here. Eh, maybe. So we trap the breakout traders that trade new highs on the daily because they put a buy limit here. A buy stop here. They're trapped. The seller's one that sold into the new highs. So this is the perversion of the market. This is why it is so difficult. I thought you said uh, buy breakouts. Well, not that kind of breakout. I want you to buy this breakout. It broke out of this half hour bar. Breakout, ride it, you're out. This breakout. Is a breakout in the daily. And but we know the dailies you have to have a hundred pip stop, a two hundred pip stop, three hundred pips. We already know by looking at the trade plans that were available on a weekly chart or a daily chart, you got a pretty wide stops going. Here are twenty five pips, these skinny lines, twenty five pip stop. So you sell here the twenty five pip stop or you sell here all the way up with a rack that has twenty five pip stops and the stops are gonna be like all up into here. And you're going to survive that move, and you're going to cash out, maybe just scalp back to the ceiling, right? If you scalp to the floor, you'd scalp to the ceiling or the peaks, right? If you sold that window, you cash out here. Um, the guy that wants to do the full um, in golf, he's going to start buying back into this. And I guess people that say, I'm going to get out at fair value, which is here. They're out, but you can see all those people getting out. You can see the new buyers that put the buy limits in here. They scalped and um, very small movement, and it actually made it to here. It actually engulfed a little bit. Then um, back to the 100-yard line, and now they're coming into my limits. When I bought at the market here, I, didn't, I can't buy very much because... Better prices below me. The limit is the the better trade because the market goes to a price that is by vacuum standards logical. So we crush into this window. It's that's that's what I want. And then I go back to sleep. I could put another rack of orders in there. So look at the behavior here. If I if I just traded one standard lot when we dip below that window, what if it goes lower? But what if it doesn't? Then the next thought is, should have bought more right there. They just nicked that wick, and that's going to rip up. This is the half-hour chart. So we could definitely go down another 30 pips. And you could be right that if you bought a standard lot here with a 50-pip with a stop, and it goes down 20, you survived it, and it goes up. And you say, look it. See, that was a good idea. So you have that you had the luxury here of watching this. Okay, so if I zoom out, I'm gonna have to delete these uh tickets. Okay, so this is the view I want where I can see. And you could do a um 
say you're going to be one of these Andrews Pitchfork people or something, or Channel Trader. Look at this is Down Channel. So when does the Down Channel end? When do you suspect we're done? Okay, well, I can see it down in here. We're, we just oh, we stop hunting now. We're taking out those lows. So that's what we want to see is the market keep going lower, and we're going to scale into this plunge with a known dollar risk. Because what if it just did nick that one up? You'd say, I'm not in big enough. So it's a Goldilocks thing. You kind of got to get just the right amount of fills on this thing. Okay. And there you go. That's what that looks like. Kaboom. Should have bought more. And once again, no surprise. We just took out the high of the day. That would have been your target if you had a one-trick pony. And uh, right there, boom.